this is really everybody's favorite part of our company because this is where it all starts. This is where every idea comes to fruition is in this room. And we do live burns on everything. We have to test everything with EPA, with, um, with the National Gas Associations, with the EPA test labs. We don't leave here till we know it's gonna pass. And we There's test. There's trial and error and stuff here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll make things that we think are great and, uh, and then they won't burn. Or we'll make things that we think is a joke and it ends up being our very best, yeah. our very best product, so. That's, yeah. that's where the land, this, this whole area you can, is where the land Yep, is. you can see here, this, um, this was our Buckstove grill that we sold for about three years. And, and it's a great, great grill. It's a smoker and a, and a grill as well. It's got that same grate on it. And, the, grill, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's got that pan underneath it so your juices, I mean, you will not cook dry food on this grill. But we decided that we wanted to cut the retail price on a little bit and that we wanted to make it hotter because it only gets 600 degrees, which is fine if you've got some time to cook. But if you're like me and you fly home and you got a bunch of people to feed real quick, yeah. you don't have a lot of time. Yeah. So we want to make it hotter. So this is our grill that's in progress right now. I mean, like nobody's seen this. And so same deal, but we took, we changed the top a little bit. See, so we changed the airflow in the top. So instead of the little chicken coop top over there, we put the round, control the airflow a little bit. We moved, we cut some of this metal out of the bottom of it. So it's not so bulky on the bottom as that is. And we moved the burner base up underneath. So well, basically the burner's higher now. Yeah. But instead of going like 600 degrees, it went like 900 degrees in about two minutes. And well, who wants to eat that, you know? So we've had to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, my house as a kid was always the test house um, for whether a stove would work or a grill would work or whatever we would bring it home and, and sometimes that was in the dead of summer we'd be swapping out wood stoves and dad would crank up a big fire and we'd be dying because he was just really seeing if it would draw like he wanted it to in the house. Um, I remember our first gas stove, our first non-bent gas stove that came in the early 90s and we had a hearth in our house that um, we'd always been wood stoves our whole life and we had a vented gas stove downstairs which is like this which is covered so your flame you know is behind that glass so you're not getting any there's there's no um, live flame I guess you'd say in the in the living room but anyway he brought a non-bent home and what he brought home was that burner base just like this and that's what it looked like. It didn't have any logs, it didn't have anything around it. And all he's doing was see if it'd heat, see if it'd be burning heat. So he fired that thing up on the hearth in the living room. My mother was, I have a wonderful mother, but she was beside herself. I sent us to grandma. She said, I'm not having my kids in a house where there's a fire on the hearth just sitting there. And, and it was sitting just like that. You know, but all those holes in there, that's how you control the airflow. And that's what designs that flame. So those holes are not just random. That's not just random holes there. Those are very intricately placed to control your flame. And Jerry Glenn is who has to do all that. So you gotta have people. Jerry's the man that designs the wood. The Jerry line. is, yes, Jerry's the man. Mm -hmm. um, this is just stuff we've been working on the burners in here, so. Wow. Yeah. So it's a constant, uh, yeah. uh, 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 trying to create new, new lines. Yes. And I guess to improve on what you've done in the past. Yes, right? yes. I want, Jerry's back here, so I wanna talk to him. This is uh, Johnny that's standing here. He works with Jerry. He's his partner back here in the lab. He's who we named that little John, little John. after um, because he, Jerry was gone to a show one week or gone to the lab or something and Johnny just built that thing. And so we decided to call it the little John. And so that's where the name came from for that. <laughs> for that. Um, back here's where we do our, our plasma work where we do the designing and the cutting. It starts up in the front, usually on the computer, and then we send it to the back, and they'll, however they do it, they get it from the computer over here to this plasma cutter. But you can see we've done some things for the Biltmore House. Uh, we've done Biltmore lanterns, outdoor signs for the Biltmore House. Baird Inn Campground, we did a lot of signage for their campground. Those two metal, those are actually fire pits that just, we flattened out. We didn't, we didn't roll it. But these are the plasma machines. They're not cutting up here on this one today, but they are in the back. It's neat. This is a big part of our, our custom work is a big, big thing.
You can get up there on it if you want. That's not gonna hurt your eyes right now. You're gonna have to speak to this man. You don't have to stop what you're doing. I just want you to speak to him, okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is Tony Glenn. Carolyn and Hugh Glenn's son. Yeah, hello, Glenn. I said, fellow yeah. Glenn here. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling him you were our longest standing employee and you were the brains behind the operation back here. You don't believe everything you hear. Believe that. <laughs> believe that. She told me you were a genius. <laughs> But not as smart as her. No, <laughs> not hardly. I thought Rich had retired yet. <laughs> smart man. If it's been done at Buck Stove in the last 30 years, that's who's done it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, still, he still goes to the shows with us and stands up, and he's the best salesman this company's ever had. Ever. Ever. He does all of our training. He's good. Yes. He is sharp, sharp, sharp man. Here's the cutouts of that door hardware that you saw up front. See here? And see the thickness of each, of every hinge. You feel how thick that is? Yeah, this is, uh, that's better than a quarter inch. Oh right? yeah, and that's the Disney World stuff. And then see, you've got those same cuts in the stoves right here. Yep. And they keep all this stuff because you can use it again. You yeah. can use this much. That small portion's yeah. out there. Right? Yeah. No, no waste in No. No, no, no. No. And they can cut this thing here. You know, that's a lot of the signage there. Yeah, that's Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or they can... Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like you have to grind that out stuff too, right? Yeah. Yeah. You do. You hang every bit of it's hand done. This back here is where we keep all of our steel and stuff as it comes in, so... Every bit of this is just stoves waiting to happen. Yeah, this is all your raw materials. Yep. Do you buy most of steel uh, nationally or do you can? American made, every bit of it, yes. 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 Pennsylvania, wherever steel comes from, they'd be in a 50 bucks. You bet. <laughs> you bet.